Even Senator Tom Udall is saying it's a great discovery. He's on hand to help the developer of a new and very strong nano metal to introduce how it's being used in a brand new product. In fact, it's been approved by the FDA for use in dental implants. KSFR's Rachel Kennedy has the story from one of the inventors of nano titanium. That's the metal being used. A new material is being manufactured in New Mexico to be used in dental implants. Nano titanium was developed at Los Alamos National Laboratory in partnership with Russia as a way to take weapons technology and repurpose it for peaceful use. Dr. Terry Lowe was the first to receive the implant in the U.S. He is also one of the scientists who helped develop it. We spoke to Dr. Lowe the morning after his procedure about this new technology. Nano titanium is essentially the same as a solid piece of regular rod, bar, plate, but it's been converted. Its, its structure has been changed so that it is much stronger and it has many other superior properties. So to help understand that is that um, nano titanium, and actually all metals are made out of crystals or grains, a, a large collection of them, million. And those grains have a, a size. That, think of them like particles of sand. What we do is we have a method by which we can change the size, shrink it by a factor of 500 or a factor of 1,000. And as that grain size or crystal size decreases, the material increases in strength. But something else very wonderful happens as well. It gets down to a size scale where if you were to take that metal and use it in an orthopedic implant, a hip implant, a, a spinal implant, or a dental implant, what you'd find is that the human body and human cells attach, in fact, and love to attach very readily and quickly to the titanium so that it integrates with the human body. So we basically humanized uh, metal, if you will. So how does the technology that's developed at LANL with grants and taxpayer money make its way into the private sector? The answer goes back to the early 90s and the collapse of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the United States government and other countries uh, were concerned about the proliferation of the uh, weapons technology in that country. And so the United States Congress uh, passed a bill to provide financial support to Russia, uh, Russia and the other former uh, Soviet Union states. One form of that was the Department of Energy's, or actually now the uh, National Nuclear Security Administration's Global Initiatives for Proliferation Prevention. And that basically matched scientists in the United States with scientists in the former uh, Soviet Union to redirect their act activities to peaceful technologies. So I was a scientist at Los Alamos when we started that and, and went to Russia and interviewed hundreds of, of scientists and other colleagues and picked out technologies that I thought we could commercialize. Now, the United States government also formed the United States Industry Coalition because when the private sector works with government, there needs to be a, you know, freedom of opportunity so that in, in anyone can compete. And so any private corporation that wants to work with these projects that were formed by the, uh, through the Department of Energy and in NSA, that they would also need to uh, apply and compete to be a member of the United States Industry Coalition. So the way that the technology was evolved was there would always be a national laboratory, and in this case, Los Alamos National Laboratory. And when I say national laboratory, I should be clear that a Department of Energy national laboratory, so like Los Alamos, Sandia here in New Mexico, the um, projects also required that there be a United States commercial partner. And, and, and the, the message we carried and the, and the success story we're telling today is we will create jobs in Russia and the former Soviet Union, and we will create jobs in the United States. So the, the commercialization act aspect of it is handled, of course, by the, the companies that are partners. The, the intellectual property that comes from this, again, belongs, because it's funded by the, the taxpayers, by the federal government, belongs to the um, national laboratories. And then the private industry, and in this case Manhattan Scientifics, has the uh, first right to be able to license that. So Manhattan uh, Scientifics pays royalties to uh, uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory uh, for the technology. According to Dr. Lowe, dental implants are just one of many new products that can be made using nanotitanium. The launch of a, a dental implant is really just the beginning because, interestingly, we have these wonderful advantages of having the metals, titanium in this case, that's stronger and that integrates more readily with the human body. So there's many things you can do in the, you know, the $25 billion um, orthopedics implant industry, and we will shake that industry um, with this new offering. But it goes way beyond that. And any, anything 
where you can imagine that you want to make something lighter or, or design things that are stronger, so airplanes, automobiles, structures of any sort, because the technology is very economical and because it offers significant increases in strength over conventional metals, um, we should be able to hit a lot of things, you know, taking 500 pounds out of the weight of an automobile or taking tens of thousands of pounds out of the weight of a, you know, a 747-class uh, jet. This is um, exciting, and it's, and it's exciting for um, New Mexico in particular because it uh, kind of grew out of here, and we are continuing to evolve the, the technology to apply it for virtually all classes of materials. Dr. Terry Lowe with Manhattan Scientifics. I'm Rachel Kennedy for KSFR News.